So we are here to convene a meeting of the audit committee of the City of Bel Air Beach. Welcome everyone. Uh, let's just go around the table and do a roll call. Uh, let me get my sheet up. Uh, Rod Seganic. Mark Goldman. John Hansick. And Kim Shaw Elliott. Uh, Zoom in, we have Heather. Uh, Heather Guadagnoli of our financial consultant, this is Kyle Riefler, city manager. Very good. All right. So I don't know if anybody's had a chance to look at the minutes of the last meeting. Um, I did. I move that they be approved as submitted. I'll second it. Very good. We have a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Very good. The minutes are approved. Secondly, we have a mo uh, do we hear a motion to approve the minutes of the July 12th, 2023 Audit Committee meeting minutes? Do we have that on the agenda? Is that what this is? No, no, this is you're reading the old minutes. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Forgive me, I'm on the wrong yes. page. Um, so we have, I don't think we approved the tonight's agenda. That's right. Okay. So that was for the the motion was for the April 16 audit committee minutes. I apologize for that error. Uh, now for the business of today, we are here to review and evaluate the request for proposals for certified public accountants to provide audit services to our city. Uh, we have had uh, five responses to our request for proposal. They include CSNL, CPAs, James Moore and Company, Markham, Salt Marsh, and Wells Hauser and Schatzel. I think uh, how we might go about this is. Uh, I think uh, we need to approve the agenda. Thank you. So all motion approval of the Thank agenda. You. Thank you, Ron. Any second to approve today's agenda? Second. Thank you very much. We have a motion and a second to approve the agenda for today. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The agenda is approved. Thank you for that. Um, what I would suggest for tonight is maybe if we just kind of, I'm sorry? Let Heather give some input. That's for, oh, uh, your chair. No, our committee is. You were last year. I know. Yeah. I didn't know it changed. No, it's all, yeah. Remember Kim Shaw Elliott is chair. Last year, I believe Jody Shirley was the representative. Oh, Yeah. my bad. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> you can just cross yeah. my name. Yeah, I'm going to set by Sandra Um, <laughs> Heather, as we begin, would you like to make any introductory remarks? Um, I, I don't know how you're uh, going to approach your ranking. I did not get the number ranking. Uh, I have here, you know, the, the ranking criteria like you all have seen, and I just kind of made notes on each one. So depending on your approach of how you want to go through it, I was kind of going to just give my input as we go, if that's all right? That is fine, and um, I'm open to any suggestions from the group, but I was thinking that we might just go by one by one for each proposal, uh, go around the table and get everyone's input on each one. It would be great if we can reach a consensus on ratings, but we, we can also do that individually and, and then just see where we are. So anybody have any thoughts? Look at a Mark's, look at a Mark's cheat sheet, my cheat sheet. We don't need yeah, evaluating. I've, yeah, I have evaluated and rated them. This is... Um, it's rather a the criteria for having a um, suitable auditor is pretty. It's a pretty regulated um, venture that we've taken on. Um, first of all, to be an auditor for a municipality is is heavily regulated with certain levels of experience and certain people on their staff 
in certain years and everything. The RFP that we put out certainly captured the most important pieces of qualifications that the, they all should have. Um, if we take away a lot of the fluff that's in there and the, take the pricing away, I think any of those firms could do the job and, and as long as they delivered as they said they would deliver and asked for the assistance they said they would ask for, I think any of them could qualify for it. Um, now that being said, there are some innuendo things about each one. Uh, for my take on it, there's enough flexibility in any RFP that they could perform their tasks and meet our needs easily. Uh, with the qualifications that they all have. So um, I didn't find it extremely hard to differentiate between the much of them because they all seem to meet the requirements, at least the ones that were in the RFP. And um, so I guess what I'm saying is that uh, there's not a whole lot of discriminating features between them all. Um, that are, is, would change substantively my rating of them. Uh, I didn't. Um, I didn't find anybody with failing grades, so to speak, or without the characteristics of the, what we want for an auditor. So, but, uh, that being said, I, I think it's it's a matter of uh, past experience with with the auditors that. Uh, have made the list. Uh, if anyone has any information uh, to share outside of the questions to the RFP or something that they received that we didn't all get, like a letter of reference or something that they can relate, um, uh, then I think it's just a matter of doing the accounting. But, uh, that's just my point. Anybody else have any pre preliminary comments? Yeah, no, I think Mark summarized it pretty well. well. They all have a good, they all have good track records. I think yeah, the difference is, do we want somebody local? Um, do we want them to be able to come into the office? Does Heather want to you know, shake hands and Kyle meet meet them on occasion? Because some are strictly 100% remote, and yeah. some are yeah. they, they claim they're in Tampa, but they're really South Florida or somewhere else. But yeah, um, you know, I think you know, those are the um, and as much of anything. Heather sees it in other cities uh, within her firm, and so she knows who's the good, the bad, the indifferent. So, um, yeah, definitely curious to Heather's insight. Yeah, for sure. But if I, you know, well, I don't know who that first person was speaking, but I agree with what that assessment. I, I agree. All of these firms could definitely do a quality audit, um, and then that was Ron's second. I recommended. There are definitely nuances that that basically what my notes say. Um, the pieces that stuck out to me are exactly like you said. Are they going to be auditing completely remotely? Um, are they going to have a physical presence? Those are the things um, that I would take into consideration. And also, one of the big things is that I really like the idea of someone that's audited, someone in Pinellas County. Um, like, we have certain we have Penny for Pinellas, for example, you know, just the relationship between us and Pinellas County and then the municipalities here. Um, I like the idea of someone that's familiar with that, not to just exclude anyone that hasn't already got an audit of Pinellas County, but those are the things that I definitely um, picked out the more. This is Kim. I appreciate those comments and I, I think I can echo what everyone else has said. I think. Uh, they're CPA, so there's certain credential cr credentialing that everybody has to have, so they're all going to be qualified to a certain extent. Um, the, the beauty of uh, the work of a CPA is that there are actual rules on how things need to be done, and so uh, it takes a lot of the gray out of it, which is nice. Um, the, the distinguishing factors come into what everybody's already just said. I think their proximity, um, their, uh, their familiarity with our region, 
certainly with our coastal issues, but also with the size of the, the smaller size of our Pinellas County communities. Um, and uh, also the desire to either be uh, remote or to have availability uh, um, on site. And Heather, what are your thoughts about that? Because they'd be dealing with you. Um, so the last few years, so the existing auditors that are, they are they salt marks, they redid, um, they've done an audit completely remotely. The staff accountants that work on our job, the, the lead um, was in Texas. Um, we've had different staff accountants from Georgia, North Florida. The personnel on our audit has changed over the years, but I've never met any of them in person, with the exception of the managing shareholder, which is Chuck Sanders. He's the one that comes and you've seen him at the city council meeting. Um, so I'm fine with that, you know, doing it completely remotely. Um, but also, I, part of me is a little old school and I used to be an auditor that used to pop down in conference rooms and speak to the actual humans that work in an office. Um, so I think that there is some, maybe I would value in that. Um, there was a lot of emails and phone calls um, between me and Salt Marsh, and they also were the auditors at another municipality. Um, and so I, I don't really have a strong preference one way or another, as long as they're available. And part of it is that I'm not there all the time, so if they need something, I, I need to be able to provide it to them. So that's where the phone calls and the emailing me personally comes in. But I work through it, and it's fine. Um, whoever was talking first said, you know, to take out the fluff out of all these. I agree with that as well. Like a lot of these RFPs did have, a, you know, fancy graphics and, and things like that. But as far as the audit process and the procedures that they have to do, like you said, Tim, there are designated things that they have to do, and everyone's going to do it, whether they have a fancy proposal or not. Um, I did like that some of the RFPs spelled out the audit approach for someone that isn't maybe familiar with what all goes into an audit. Um, but again, I, all of them would be qualified. I will say, Salt Marsh, uh, and I know we talked, we said, you know, exclude the price consideration, but they were three times higher. Um, and that, um, I have a hard time picking somebody with such a cost disparity. Yeah. Um, and also, we weren't really pleased with them this past year with the timing of the report. That's been a couple so years. I will say that. Uh, yeah. It's been a couple years that they've been done. That's, you know, kind of your point. You know, the two that stood out to me that actually gave some timelines was Markham and Wells Hauser, you know, that said, you know, we're going to deliver by this date and you're going to have it all done and we'll get the GFAO, you know, submitted timely. And so. Right. You know, those are the intangible things that jumped out to me. And then on Wells, the other intangible was, you know, they committed to no change um, in a partner uh, without 30 days notice to the city manager, where we asked them all to make that kind of a commitment, but they were the only ones that I could see when I went through them all that actually made that promise. Um, yeah, so I... I, well, I it's interesting that you picked that out, too, because Kyle and I had a brief conversation about that the other day. They were the ones, they really, I felt like, went through our RFP and answered all the questions that we had. They committed to all of the things that we said. Um, they were, they had the least amount of fluff, no graphics, you know, it was just what we asked for. Um, but I, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I, I thought that they responded, you know, like you said, just specifically to the, to the RFP. Um, and they, didn't wander into how uh, pounding their own chest. You gotta love Markham who put pictures of Bel Air, Clearwater Beach, and St. Key on the cover of their proposal. <laughs> Those are just things that, as a person who used to give these kind of proposals, you gotta like, what? Yeah. Why? <laughs> yeah. Well, not why. They, they do that. Um, when I, I, I do need to tell you this. So, Wells, Hauser, and Chessel, they're the auditors for Reddington Shores now. That's my other municipality that I work at. But they're also the firm that I used to work for. I worked for them as an auditor for like 12 years. Oh. So I know them inside and out. Um, and I want to put that out there before our discussion goes any further. 
uh, in case that. All right, so you can't vote. You're conflicted out. <laughs> as long as you're not a consultant exactly. anymore. So it's out there. I'm out of there. Right. I like being on this side a lot better, being audited. <laughs> and, and, and I think um, for Salt Marsh, they were just sending a message. There, oh, nothing literally. more than that. Uh, you know, I wouldn't even that because I didn't even consider rating them um, because you don't do that, I and mean, that was almost like a slap in the face. You don't do that. Uh, it is, and I felt that way too. Like, yeah. man, you really don't want to work with me anymore. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't know it. I didn't know it was because of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it feels like it is. No, I don't think yeah, so. I don't, I don't think so. But, but they make that one easy. That was that was yeah, that was I, rated the low. I at least rated them, but no, I, I wouldn't even rate them because that was so ridiculous. Why waste your time? That's like really. All righty. Well, why don't we then begin? Um, let's start with the first one listed, which is C, S, and L. Ron, should we start with <coughs> that you might have about them? Yeah. No, these guys um, put together a good uh, proposal. They, you know, I mean, do you want to, you want me to fill out the chart as we go along? Of That's fine. Just, oh, here you go. I've already done mine. I can tell you if we just want to rate them sure. as we go. I got one here. Okay. Um, got one. okay. But, you know, for, for the qualifications, experience, and expertise, I put them as, um, I gave them 40 points. Um, what was the one thing? So the one thing that I kind of took as a, a negative was they talked about the Tampa office, but all the people were out of Bradenton. So I took five points off for them being Bradenton based. So that was my thought there. On the audit approach, um, I gave them a 25. Oh, here's my notes. Um, they didn't provide a calendar, so that's why I gave them a discount there. On their uh, references, um, they only gave one year, I gave them 10, because they only gave references for one year. Um, that they, the, the cities or municipalities that they were running, they only had a one year window. And then the fee, I did give them a 10 because they were the cheapest. So overall, they were at an 85 for me. Thank you. Mark, your thoughts? Oh, uh, on CSNL, is that where we were? Yes. I gave them an overall rating of 90. I believe that's right. Not 90. So I was, I was at 85. 70, I was yeah. Then yeah, it would have been 90 for me. 15, 45, 90, yeah. So what would you, what'd you have for qualifications experience? Uh, 45. Approach is 25. That's 70. And um, responses was... Fifteen eighty-five. Did they have any responses? Of references. Yes, I I spoke to the woman. I called um, the reference of the city of Bradenton, and she said that they are very happy with them. I don't know if you were able to see my notes on that. Um, Sarah, from you. Their yeah. neighbor. Their oh, here they are. Yes. Is neighboring the city hall. Oh wow. She said that they're particular audit, like they would literally walk from their office to the <coughs> field work at the city. Um, and she, but, you know, it was hard for me to tell whether or not they're going to come here to us in person. But she said that they were very happy with that. Good. So what did you give them for a fee? For total or a fee? Uh, ten. ten. Okay. That's ninety-five. 
Hanson. I'm pretty much in line with what Ron did uh, looking at him um, and one comment about Markham actually uh, my organization is looking at them for auditing and providing a uh, part-time finance officer hmm. our fine our budget committee met last week and uh, we now have to wait. For, I need to wait for my executive director to come off a of vacation. But uh, um, our proposal was to go forward with Markham to do uh, their stuff. But yeah, this proposal is similar to uh, what we got up there at headquarters. Um, but yeah, my my scores align with uh, Ron's. Um, 40 for qualifications, audit approach was 25, response to references was 10, and the fee was 10 for a total of the 85. Okay, on mine, um, for the uh, qualifications, I gave a 42. Uh, I like the fact that they said that uh, Florida municipalities are a core part of their practice, that it's 90% of their auditors work on municipal engagements. Uh, 20 of their current clients are governmental and municipal uh, clients, so that was a good fact. They did state that they would not use subcontractors. Um, they uh, have experience with Cities of comparable size, but um, Bradenton is obviously a much larger, more complex city than ours. Um, and they have 10 staff members on the government team, which of course staff is important to be able to support the auditors. Uh, regarding the, um, let's see, the audit approach, uh, again, everybody's going to pretty much have the same, but, excuse me a second while I'm lost where I am, let's see. That was a total of 30, 30 points, yes, okay. Uh, I thought uh, they were responsive without a lot of fluff in their proposal, which was good. Um, oh, yes, the, the point here was that uh, the city is to prepare the schedules and the confirmations um, with the expectation that we'll be doing their part and that they pick up and do their part from an audit perspective. And Heather, was that a good approach for you? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I do prepare those anyway. Okay. So, um, I would give them a 28 on the audit approach. Now, uh, references, did they receive, oh, we just said that was a reference and it was good, so we'll give them 15 on the references and the proposed fee, which was the cheapest one that was offered, so I'd certainly give them a 10 on the fee. And if something's better than math and me, Okay. What was yours on the references again, please? Fifteen. Uh, Fifteen. Okay. Because they had a solid, good reference. Thank you. Okay. Anything else on CSNL and Heather? Do you have any particular comments about them? Yeah, no, like I said, the woman from Bradenton seemed very happy. I did like their proposal. Um, the only thing against it was a knock against them, and it's really not a knock against them, is that they're their closest client was the city of Bradenton, and then like Ron said, you know, they have a Tampa office. The thing, the other thing I have in my notes here, they talked about, and I don't know if you guys picked up on this at all, but they put in there that they use IDEA and caseware software, that's data mining. Um, we're very small, we don't have that many transactions, but, um, and I, I'm not even sure how they would really use that, but that's, 
you know, software that they would be using to look into our accounting records and identify irregularities and try to focus their sampling. Um, so they were the only one that, well, no, they're not the only one, but I, I did note this, that those two softwares were noted. Um, it doesn't really matter to me. And then like to your point, Tim, I do prepare a lot of schedules already and the confirmations and stuff, so I'm going to continue to do what I do. Um, whether they use them or not, you know, that they get up to them. But I like them overall. I thought they were good. Yeah. Well, good. Thank you. Let's move on to James Moore and Company. I want to switch the order. John, no. do you want to give your thoughts first? I'll keep going. Uh, okay, go, go Ron. Go, Ron. Just got to find out where I put it. Should I put it in your order? Log off my cheat sheet. Um, so I gave him a 40 um, for presentation. Again, the discount um, was their Daytona based. And the, uh, the lead partner is an adjunct professor at Stetson. So if he's over, we know he's on the other coast then. Um, I gave him a 27. On the audit approach, I, don't know, I can't find that page. Oh, there it is. Um, yeah, they gave the three steps uh, that they'd go through, but they didn't actually put a calendar in place, so that's why there, that's why there was the discount. Um, references, I put twelve, and. Um, I like the cities. I like, you know, they put down you know, Madeira Beach, St. Pete Beach, Indian Shores, but they didn't list that they did GFAOs for any of them. So I assume they didn't. So that's why I just killed that. And then for the pro proposed fee, I put them in an eight. So altogether, they're at an 87. Thank you. Mr. Goldman. Uh, I've got them at 45, approach 27, references I have them at 15, I, I know they're not, we didn't get personal signatures on the references, but if we endeavored to check every one of the people that they did current audits for, they, we would have found that there was no complaints, or else they wouldn't have put them down. Yeah. <laughs> we know that's how, that's how they work. Yeah, and I, I came with 10 on the proposed fee. So what was that total? 25, 70, 97? Those, those are high marks. Mr. Hanser. Okay, um, 39 for experience and expertise, out of the approach, 25 because they, again, same thing with Ron, no dates, time frames, uh, I'm going um, to do 12 on the references, and For the fee, I'll give them a nine. You tell me, you have to make me bring out a calculator on this one. Okay, I got one.
All right. Um, from me, uh, I'm sure this is a highly qualified firm, but somehow or another it just wasn't a standout for me. It just seemed rather um, uh, routinized. It was just a, a rather routine, fluffy <laughs> presentation. <laughs> so for qualifications, I rank them at 40. The audit approach 25, uh, the uh, references 10, because uh, I don't think any of them were personalized, uh, the fee at 8. Moving on to Markham. Uh, yeah, so I already made my comment. The cover page had pics of cities other than ours, but um, uh, let's see. Audit approach, I gave it a 40. Um, they noted the Tampa office, but the principles of like South Florida. So that's why I had them. 40. Then I had them at a 27 for the procedure. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the roll call. I had them at a 30 because they did give a calendar on the audit approach. And then on the references, I put them at 11. Again, only one to three years and then no GFA noted. And then on fee, I put them at a four. So I had an 85 total. Five on qualifications, 30, approach, 12, references, and 6, fee. Total on that? 93. 82 or 3? Hmm? What did you say? 93. 93. Mr. Hansen. Okay. Mark 39 for experience, qualifications, 25 for the audit approach. References 11, fee, give him a four. Um, let me add that up. I didn't get to that part. Like I said, I got interrupted by a phone call before I could finish up. <laughs> That's all right. Heather, do you have any comments about Markham or more? I think I skipped you on that. Oh, that's okay. Um, excuse me. I didn't have any real strong feelings one way or another about those. Um, I would say James Moore has a 
I'm a little bit torn because I believe their office is in Daytona, so a little bit further away. Um, but they do have local ovens, so like Ron had mentioned, Tampa Beach, Indian Shores, and Madeira Beach, so I do like that. Um, but then Markham has a Tampa office, but no Penelman on it. So, um, you know, it's just the opposite. You know, one is a potentially closer with um, no Penelman experience, and then one's a little bit further away. Um, both of those also mentioned that they're going to use share files, um, like, you know, a remote audit, which leads me to believe that they're not going to be physically there, which is fine. Um, so, no, I, I didn't have strong feelings about either one of those. Alrighty, my comments about Markham are similar in that just uh, not, a, not a real standout for me. Um, for the qualifications, I rated them at 35. I noted that they have a New York City headquarters, which is fine, and offices in Tampa, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and West Palm, but it seemed as though their practice really is focused on East Coast as opposed to uh, familiarity with our side of the state. Um, on audit approach, uh, the um, I was a little, a little confused by that in the sense that they mentioned that they have a bot, but it wasn't clear to me yeah. what that function was or how they were going to be using that. So. For that reason, I put uh, 20. Well, I put 335 hours with bots, you know, hourly. <laughs> yeah. With, with the exception of Salt Marsh, it was the most hours they were going to put into the audit, and then they're using bots. It didn't make any sense to me. All right, so yeah. what was your audit approach number again, Kim? Uh, audit approach was 25. Okay. Uh, references, I'm going to go with 10. And the proposed fee, I had it at 6. Actually, I'm going to lower that to five. I get so bad. All righty, we're, we're making progress here. Salt Marsh. Well, we kind of talked about it already. I mean, I mean, they're who we had, but. Um, I have a 35. For uh, the qualifications, mainly you know, destined all remote. You know they wrote that it was remote and like that. Audit approach twenty five. <clears throat> um, no calendar. They did put the steps, but you know I was sh shocked that they had uh, four hundred seventy five hours. Um, and I put them in a ten for references, just because we know them and. Um, then I put them in as a one on the fee. So all in 81. All right. Mr. Goldman? I would go on Salt Marsh with 40, 20, 5, and 0. Big 65. <laughs> you passed. You feel my pain? <laughs> Barely. <clears throat> I kind of feel the same way Mark does. I felt insulted by their proposal. Uh, qualifications 20, audit approach 20, response to references 10, and um, fee 5, 4, 85. That's being generous. That's a 55, right? Yeah, oh, 50. Wait a minute. 50. 20, 40, 50, 55. You're right. My bad. I at least gave them a 65. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, I rated them 35 on qualifications. Uh, they are our auditors, so we would hope that they're qualified to be such. 
um, their audit approach, 20, because we haven't been satisfied with their approach. Uh, references, five, because our, we are our strongest reference for that one. And uh, proposed fee, one. 64. 55. All righty. Geez, I, I was generous then. Oh my yes. gosh. <laughs> so our final yeah. respondent is Wells. Is Wells. So I gave them a 45 because they're in St. Pete. And as we talked about, yeah, they just they really seem to lay out uh, their audit, um, how they go about it, their, who, their experience, their expertise. They're in our backyard. They're doing it with all the neighbors that we like them to be doing it with. Audit approach, I put them at a 30. Um, they gave the calendar dates. You know, kind of would be done here, presented to council, presented to GFAO. I gave them a 15 for the response. Again, they had they they noted um, GFAO clients, um, and they had they had legacy time with most of their clients that they gave us offered as referrals, and then fee. I gave them a seven, so I gave them all in a ninety-seven. Goldman on Wells Hauser. Wells Hauser, 40, 30, 10, and 7. Qualifications. Um, St. Pete is their only office, which was, I thought, a great fact. Uh, they have 11 in total staff. One thing, they have no women on staff, which is a little concerning. Um, and that it looks as though the Schatzels might be a father son team, and I don't know what kind of impact that has in terms of, you know, how everybody else in the firm feels how they get along and how assignments are dealt with. So just, I think, something we need to look at. But um, I love their uh, cl current client list that includes Seminole, Oldsmar, South Pasadena, Bel Air Bluffs, and Reddington Shores. So they certainly know our area. Uh, on the uh, da -da 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 responses of references. Oh, Audit approach. Audit approach, approach. I gave them a 30. Okay. Uh, I like the fact that they will be on site. Yep. Uh, and I mm -hmm. want to make sure that that's okay with uh, Heather, but I, I thought that was a very strong factor as well as the fact that they're close to get here to do so. Uh, on the responses, I'll go with 15 on that one along with every, uh, everybody else. And on the proposed fee, uh, it was, they were. I'll give them an 
tell you that they do have women on staff. Like they didn't list anybody on the audit team other than I think that they said staff accounts, and I think that might be a woman. Um, and the Shastles are wonderful people. I mean, Pete Shastles is probably the nicest man I've ever known. Definitely wonderful to work with. Um, and then Matt Shastle is the son. And I know he's a good auditor because I trained him. Um, <laughs> they will. Um, they will be on site, definitely. Um, it, I don't want to say that it's inconvenient. Are you coming on? No, that was, that was me. I'll go over the... Uh, yeah, I was just course. signaling to Kyle. Uh, since he's on his iPad, hopefully he's got it all totaled yeah. up instead of me doing it. But, but I, th I think, um, yeah, I kind of think from a continuity perspective, at some point, Dad will retire and Son will take over the business. So I like it from that. I kind of think, you know, down the road that that could be an opportunity. Mm -hmm. I, know, I know we'll do an RFP long before that ever happens. Mm -hmm. The other partner, John Hauser, he's the, um, he would be the second partner reviewer on our job, but he's the main partner that audits Bellair Bluff. So, you know, he's also familiar with the area and the local audits as well. Very good. Well, just when you talk to you know, your peers and what you see with the other cities, I mean, how does the fees rank? I mean, is, I mean, I know they gave us a fee any room to go back and say, can you do it for a thousand dollars less, or is it worth it? You, you get what you pay for at the end of the day, so. Yeah. <clears throat> well, with the exception of Salt Marsh, I thought that these were all very fair. Um, we budgeted 35000 for the, this next year's audit. Um, that's what I was kind of anticipating these coming back, so I was pleased that a lot of them were below that. Um, but I think that it's fair. I mean, you see the amount of hours that they're anticipating spending on our job. It's a lot of work, there's a lot of documentation, and then there's a lot too that we don't see, you know, in their proposals you can see that there's the planning and risk assessment, evaluating internal controls and testing and the reports, like all that takes just so much time. Um, I think that a lot of these firms will probably attend a lot of the same conferences, they'll go, they do a lot of the same training, um, but it does take quite a bit of time, you know, to, on their side, you know, they have auditing standards that they have to document that they've done this and that. And then going all the way back to the very beginning, Kim, you had asked about the single audit. Um, we will probably never be subject to a single audit. They just raised the threshold for that to a million dollars, which is if you get federal funds and spend over a million dollars in one year, then you would be subject to a single audit. So we have no um, anticipation of ever being, at, at least during the terms of this audit, um, we wouldn't be subject to that. So I think that we can base our at least the cost considerations on their main price without that um, single audit. But the one thing I will say that I thought stood out on Wall Southern Chapel, they were the only ones that mentioned that alternative report for the ARPA, which is not an issue for us anyway because we spent all of our ARPA money, but I thought that that was interesting that they're, they are so familiar with this area and the municipalities and just the operations um, to mention that. Um, the other ones obviously will have to do ARPA reporting as well, but it kind of makes me think, you know, did they just take an RFP that they did for someone else and move it and replace some, some other city's name with Bel Air Beach? But well, we've seen that before. I did. Uh, yeah, for sure. And I'm, I'm pleased to see that you guys saw the value of the Wall Southern Chapel. I mean, they do. I, I am the most familiar with them, obviously. So I would be very happy with them as our auditors. I don't know how the your ranking added up. I don't know if you have a tally. I have that. Who, I do. Um, so I what I that? took. We have uh, of the uh, the full members of the audit committee. Um, we have five of six here. So I did the average score of the five. Um, well, sorry, we have four of the six here. But we did have Rob Riesling turn in his numbers prior to the meeting. So I included his. So I have. The average of the five. What was Rob's totals. numbers? Um, do you want his totals at the bottom? You had um, they're, they're on the sheet in front of you, but they're um, his highest is actually. Oh, um, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't yes see it. Now. Yeah, that's in there. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, got it. So if I go down the list um, of the the average 
for total scores. So CS and L, I have a total of 91.2. For James Moore and company, I have 88.8. .8. For Markham LLP, 84.8. For Salt Marsh, Cleveland, and Gund, uh, 68.4. And for Wells, Hauser, and Schatzel, PA, I have a 94.2. So that was the high score average. Hmm. Well, those were the two picks. I didn't do the ranking, but I like Wells, Hauser, and Schatzel, and I like CSNL as well. Those were the two that I was scoring with. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Thank those were my two also, my mm -hmm. leading ones going So in. do we need a motion to recommend proceeding with Wells Hauser? Is that on the agenda? Is that, do we, do we make a motion to send it to city council? No, you guys. You what are the decisions? Yeah. Okay. Is your decision? Oh, so we do the actual selection? Yes. Yeah. Um, do you think we should, Invite two in. I think you recommend it. You recommend it to the city council, and then they make the final decision. Yes, yeah, I don't think we need to go through that exercise of an interview. I know an interview. Uh, it's up to you guys. I mean, you don't. I don't think so. Really? Huh. Mm -hmm. Especially if Heather knows them, and they can <coughs> test it out. I'm fine. I I'll make a motion just yeah. that we. Recommend Wells Hauser Schatzel as our future auditor would be my motion. I'll second. All right. Well, we're, we're uh, efficient tonight. So yeah. we have a motion and a second to recommend that Wells Hauser and Schatzel serve as our new auditors. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Wonderful. Well, I will say that the city council will have the option, if they want to, to then interview them. Um, I think that would be up to their discretion, but I think that your recommendation will carry a lot of weight with what they decide. But they, if you, you know, wanted to interview them, you could do that and have them come and present and just meet you guys. But sounds like we're all in favor of Wells Hunter Council. Now, is this for one year? It's a three-year with a two-one-year extension. Now, I did notice, like Markham in their cover letter, they said that they're proposing three years with two-one-year extensions, but they're pricing. They didn't put the option yeah. in there. But um, but these guys carried out their option through the full five years. Three-year. Do you guys feel good about plus two-one-year options? About um, you, you make this recommendation, but we'll have them come and represent themselves at the at the meeting. You, when they when they present, yeah. The, the no, no. When we when we uh, recommend to council for approval, yeah, that's uh, yes. So it they, would be good for uh, yeah. the partner just to make a few comments about. Yeah. I think it would be good for him just to say we're, we're St. Pete based. Or, just the winning. Yeah. Just yeah. the winning team. Yeah. 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 That was not part of the motion we presented. So oh. is that something you want to add? Uh, I mean. I don't know if we got that. I mean, you can make a motion quick to get it on record. Yeah, if that's yeah well, just to add it to the motion that um, recommend um, Wells House and Shot Soul and that uh, invite them to present or, or uh, introduce themselves to City Council. And um, accept the responsibility. And accept, yeah, and accept the bid. So that would be my motion. Very good. Is that, do we have a second? I'll second again. It's all the same motion. Very good. All right. And the motion has been. Technically, it's not Robert's rules, but I'm not going to be a parliamentarian here. <laughs> the motion has been revised as so stated. I invite them to introduce signs. Now, if they refuse, no, we'll, we'll, we'll think about something. <laughs> <laughs> Heather, appreciate your insight yeah. as always yes. and all the hard. You. All the hard work that you do, because I know, in my opinion, you make it their job easy. So you know they should be paying you yeah. instead of us paying them. No, but, I'll say. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys. I know that this is not a, a short process to go through all of these, so I really appreciate everybody's insight. Thank you very much. I look forward to meeting you in person. I think for the. Me too.
for the um, on-site and the amount of hours that they're going to put into it, I think it's actually going to save us some money on Hathers and for as much as she had to work for the previous firm. Good. So I'll throw that in there because yeah. she did a lot of work. No, and, yeah, and anything we can, any hours we can save her. And, mm -hmm. and she had to wait for those people to wake up in Texas so she could get them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, before we take off here, I'll, I'll be fine. To this I'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah, we're looking forward to working with them. I think it'll be a great relationship. Terrific. I'm awesome. happy with your toy. Yeah. Okay. Um, believe it or not, I'm sitting here with last year's audit committee meeting minutes to be approved. And it does have you as the chair. Last year. Last year I was on the I uh, would have approved. Well, we're gonna, I mean, Jody Shirley was on, on the committee. Yeah. We approved these already, didn't we? I thought In the last really, audit committee meeting? Probably not, because this would have been the first audit committee since that. So maybe Renee yeah, got that no, date wrong really on the agenda. It has to be the April 16th? This says Wednesday, July 12th. Huh. So it's almost been a year. And Jody Shirley, city council member. Okay, here's the minutes from our meeting last month. We approved these. Wait, wait, yeah, so you approved those. That's audit? I don't know. Maybe they never got approved. No, that. These are the, the, well, they need to fix up here at the top, but it says City of Bel Air Beach Audit Committee meeting Tuesday, April 16th at 5 p.m. I should say 2024, but um, yeah, we approved. The July 12, 23 audit meeting minutes. Okay. At the, Go ahead. At the previous. They approved the July 12th. Yeah. <coughs> so these were already approved. So it should have been signed already. Yeah, I don't. It's probably just a I don't know why. I'm, I'll check that and get back. Okay. Here. Yeah, but we approved those at the last meeting. So this one. Is today. Is there any um, new business? Anything further for us? I guess do? the only thing I ask, old business, I guess we'll get a draft of the budget after you have the work session coming up. And yes, because then, then we'll get all the a draft with all the council input from the first workshop. And then do we, can we discuss with, with the uh, members present uh, what's a good date that we should start with? What do you think it? Well, and that's, that's the citizen advisory committee. Yeah, it's You're a separate. You're serving as the audit selection committee right now. Yeah, it's a separate committee. Oh, so it's not the audit committee that looks at the budget, it's the citizen's advisory. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, because Kim will get it when she's on council. Yes. Yeah. Okay, got it. So, okay. we could bypass that if it just doesn't make sense. Um, go the standard way where Renee sends out emails. Do you just have her? What, do you have an idea? Is it going to be like end of this month? I'm, I, you guys want typically do five o'clock and usually do some but Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Yeah. Um, it, our workshop is Monday, so anytime after that, it could be next week or it could be. So I'm going to be out of town next week. Okay. Good but the following week, I'm here. Okay. How about for just, the rest of the month? Just as a side note, are you guys here for the following? Week? I'm going to have to. I well, you won't. You don't need to bring my. Oh, okay. Written calendar with all my travel stuff, so set a date here for now, and I'll look at it tonight. Okay. I'll shoot you an email. Okay. And we'll just have Renee send it out. Yeah, we'll send it out, but I'll just have a general idea. Okay. I know he's here, and you. Like the week of. Okay. What is that? The week of the twenty fourth. Yeah. That's pretty good. Are you talking okay. about the advisory committee? Yeah, it's just. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. I just want to get some input. All right. So. Um, well, that would be good. Fourth week of June. Can I say my two cents? Sorry, before you finish. Yeah. Um, that draft that you'll see then that we prepared, we won't have the updated ad valorem numbers until like they give that to us, the taxable values on July 1st. So just keep that in mind when you go over that budget. Um, we'll get more than we budgeted in ad valorem. So does that so mean we get we get to call you and Kyle a nickname? We call it one sand and the other one bag. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a sandbag and figure out. <laughs> 
Heather. Yes. Um, how far has the estimated value been from the actual value in the past like, couple of years? It doesn't fluctuate a lot. But the budget that we prepared, the first draft that's going to go in front of the council for the first workshop, I, we just checked to add more on that last year's budgeted amount because we didn't have any taxable estimated value yet. Um, but we have since gotten the preliminary estimate, and it's higher. I mean, your taxable values have gone up, I want to say, 10%, I guess. Like the last two years, we've had a 10% increase in taxable values. Wow. I know. Well, we live in paradise. But it's been fluctuating too much between that preliminary and that. Was six. Yeah. Six. 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 I will say that um, sure. the uh, sheriff contract that's going up another seven percent. Percent. That makes sense. They're going to have to start doing more. And I'm going to send you an email about that too. I almost hit a vehicle yesterday on 20th Street making a right turn, parking too close to the intersection the wrong way. Yeah, that's uh, that, that 20, corner by 21st. Me too. 21st, I'm Terrible. sorry. Terrible. I got to go down 21st to get to mine because of the median on 22nd. Yeah. With that big two story there on that corner. There was somebody in a, in a circular driveway doing irrigation work. I got my blinker on and I'm slowing down to make the turn. And I go to make the turn and here's this vehicle staring me in the face within 20 feet. Parked the wrong way. Oh, you know what? That was all the guys replacing the meters. That's what it was. Oh, they have a funny... County? It was no, who's no, ever replaced all the water. Subcontractor or something? The, 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 yeah, they're all doing the, the water meters because they did my reclaim meter. So they, they did my reclaim. It was the reclaim guys yesterday, and today it was the, the regular meter. Well, further down the street there, that red house that's been vacated, Anna's house, we call it, the, the yes. crazy lady. Those well, people working on that parked on the wrong, wrong way on the street. Well, come uh, down. I'm going to bring it to the art. The yeah, sheriff, when he patrols it, they're parked the wrong way to get a ticket, not a warning. Right. This is getting old. <clears throat> so on 22nd Street at the cul-de-sac past me, mm -hmm. at the far end, not only do they they park in front of everybody's mailboxes or wherever they want, but they park on the wrong side and, and they line both sides of the street. The garbage company now does a U-turn on Donato and backs all the way down the street up over a block to get in so that they can get out after they're, they're yeah. doing it. And the, um, the recycle people have to do the same thing. And the post office guy, he's, he, has a, he can't put it in the mailbox from his truck. Mailbox. He has to stop, get out. And it's and just, technically, they don't, if, if it's blocked, they, they don't have to get out of the vehicle. Right, they can skip it. Yeah. But the point of the whole thing is that it is illegal to park like that. It is. On the wrong side of the street and facing the wrong way. But the sheriff comes up and down the street and doesn't do anything about it. Nothing. Mark, it's my point. Right. I know. We pay buku bucks. I know, and if you, if, I, if you stop him and you tell him, sometimes he looks at me like, okay. I'll we talk. pay his salary, yeah, but they work for us. I know. Well, those are the city, those are the counties. Contractors. Not in that case. That is no. These are these are construction workers. The contractors on a new house being talking two different things. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. They're three different. Sorry. Issues. So the ambulance couldn't get in. Do we need to adjourn the meeting? Yes, that's what I was going to come back. I recommend we adjourn the meeting so that we can continue our side bar. Yes. I think we have a motion to adjourn the meeting. Do we have a second? Who made the motion? Brian. Brian. did. I'll second. <laughs> Very good. You and me today. Uh, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? So we don't have to put that. Okay, motion. Mm -hmm. Passes. The meeting closes at 6.05.